Thank you much. Well, in your speaker's folder there, it says I'm going to talk about three different things. I've decided to talk only about the last one, which is hidden gems for financial freedom. The reason is it's really important. In my workshops, I talk about a lot of detail and have a lot of interaction. Detail and interaction. Uh, we go through sheets, worksheets, where people actually figure out their retirement number, retirement budgets, we talk about investment strategies, we actually do case studies of dentists that are doing poorly or doing well, where we figure out where we think they are, and then we discuss what actually happens, and I track these guys so I can report in what actually happened. A lot of detail, but the big but here that I want to talk about today is the fact that I've talked to a lot of retired dentists over the last several years, and let's take an example of two. One is Dr. A, who's living on $75,000 a year. Now, that's better than the, than the average American, but actually dentists would prefer to have more like $150,000 a year. That matches their lifestyle better. But he only has $75,000. Over here, we've got Dr. B, who can spend $300,000 in retirement. He saved $8 million. He's doing great, right? Well, I tell you, after interviewing these people extensively, it's a crapshoot as to who is actually more comfortable and has a more fulfilling life in retirement. Wow. Why? I need to go over a couple things here. First of all, health. I'd like to tell a little story about my first wife. She had breast cancer from 1996 to 2001. She did not make it and I still miss her a lot. But the point is, is she went out to LA for extensive radiation treatments at Cedar sinai Hospital. Cedar sinai is right next to Beverly Hills. So she was in a group at the clinic of very wealthy people. And of course, when she went for these treatments, she talked to them. Well, typically, we'll call the woman Rose, whose husband, Herb, is going through radiation treatment, she'd talk to him. And Rose would say something to the effect of, you know, my doctors told me 25 years ago I should quit smoking. And you know what, if I had, I'd have more energy to take care of Herb. Yeah, we have a person who's 24-7 at the house, but you know what, I don't have the energy and I'd like to take care of him. Meanwhile, she talks about Herb. He was told years ago that he needed to exercise because of a heart condition. She says, you know, he doesn't have any energy. The radiation is absolutely killing him. He should be in better shape. I'm afraid that he's not going to last much longer, and I would give anything, all the money I have, my beautiful house in Beverly Hills, just to be around him two more years. True story. She heard many, many of these stories. So health is very, very important. This is not a prop, well, it's actually a prompt, not a prompt that I'd like to show you for a minute. Something else about health. We've got Lisa here, who's a health expert. Have any of you read this book? It's called Younger Next Year. I know David, a couple of you have. I know David, Wa David Black, who's next door, has read it. This is written by a 70-year-old author and a 46-year-old physician. What they propose through research in this book is that people are able to maintain their athletic ability and fitness that they had in their 40s up until their mid to late 80s. Wow. People are able to maintain their fitness athletically into their mid to late 80s. Well, the main author here, who's Chris Crowley, is 70. He says, I've had the best year ever skiing and biking. He lives in Colorado like I do. I've always wanted to be able to ski until I was 80, and not just ski, but ski bumps and ski trees, which I really like to do. I'm 64 and I can still do it. There's hope. <laughs> so what in the heck, how can you do this? Well, here's the catch. Chris says you have to work out six days a week, an hour a day. Holy crap, my God, who's gonna do that? I can work out three days a week, but six days is the key. So if you do this six days, what do you do? Do you run for an hour? Do you do hot yoga? Uh, do you do this CrossFit, which I've never done? No. He says 
even if you just walk, walk a mile in that hour, you're going to be much, much better off than you were before. So health is a key thing. We're talking about a triad here. Financial responsibility, health, and this, the third thing, which you guys probably don't think of much, and it's connections. Connections. In the first two years of retirement, for doctors in particular, it's a lot of alcohol abuse, drug abuse, suicide. Why? Because the connection is broken at work. No, you don't have office staff to complain about anymore. You don't have patients to complain about anymore. You don't have colleagues to talk to as much anymore. And the big thing is, is you're not doctor anymore. You're Mr. or Ms. Wow. Connections are important. I want to tell you people, I'm preaching to the choir here. You guys are incredible. You are the most connected group I've ever, ever talked to. Even if I weren't speaking, I'd come back year after year, Linda. I mean, you guys are incredibly connected. Linda, how many Facebook friends do you have? 3,200. I got 500, and that's, a, that's, that's more than my, my daughters and, and sons. I mean, it's incredible. You guys are connected. That's vitally important in retirement. It doesn't have to be your colleagues. It can be new connections. And in Colorado, I'm finally starting to make some connections with sports people. Uh, so this is a triad. This is a three-legged stool. Financial responsibility, health, and connectivity. I claim that if you have two out of the three, you're going to be okay. That $75,000 a year doctor probably has, if he's happy, has the health and the connections. Thank you much for listening.